Hey everybody, so today we're going to be taking a look at the long-awaited mailbox tutorial. We're just going to move pretty quickly through this and at the end we will have a medium level quality of detail mailbox. I'm of course not going to recreate this with exact precision. If you wanted to do that, maybe use a CAD program or look up the exact measurements. So I'm just going to give us the look and feel of a medium quality in terms of density, that is, um, mailbox here. I'm going to move pretty quickly through this, so I have screencast keys on. If you have some trouble following along, feel free to rewind the video, watch it as many times as you need, or check out any of my previous content that discusses 3D modeling. Once we're done 3D modeling our mailbox, we will move into the material uh, phase where we will start to define some of the materials for the surface quality of this. We're not going to be going into the distressment of the surface here with some of this rust or the um, the wear and tear that you'll see on here. It will be a brand new looking mailbox, kind of stylized um, in its nature, but we are going to dig into a little bit of material stuff. I'll explain a lot of it, and then we'll look at creating some of these decals here for the top and side of the mailbox, and we'll get those on our mailbox. And be well on our way to creating a pretty decent quality asset, either for a film prop or for a, um, I wouldn't really use this for a game, to be completely honest. I think it would be a bit dense, but you could throw it into a game engine and use it for that purpose if you so choose. All right, so let's start by creating a cylinder, and this is going to be the top half here. So let's hit F6 and make sure we have 48 vertices with a radius of 1 and a depth of 2. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees on the X. And there we go. We've got the top of our cylinder. So I'm just going to hop into edit mode here, go to the side, make sure we can see through this thing and just switch to vertices. Make sure that our transformation orientation is set to global. And I'm just going to drag select all of these X F to delete those select the whole thing. W look for smooth. Whoops. That's not what I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking for smooth shade. That's what I want. There we go. And then let's just turn on our sub object components auto smooth here. And so now we have the top half of our mailbox. I also need to switch my clipping options here in the display settings to 0.1. And that will prevent me from having any issues that look like Z fighting that really aren't. So we're going to put a loop cut here and then hit control B and then 0.85. And then what we're going to do is grab this row of faces, shift D to duplicate it, right click to put it back into its place. And then I'm just going to hit the P key, separate by selection, switch out into object mode, select this here, control A, apply rotation and scale and location. And then we're going to throw a mirror modifier onto our stack here. Just switch those on. And now we're going to isolate this. And the next thing we need to do is look at this from the side, grab this row of edges here and switch into the side. And then we want to make sure that our pivot point is set to median point and we want our snapping turned on. So we're going to extrude, right click, scale in by two, <clears throat> switch to ver vertex mode, switch to active element and switch to vertex snapping, deselect, reselect and align. All right, so there we go with that. We're gonna put a loop cut right in here. And then we're gonna put a loop cut right up here. We're gonna move it over so it's about square with the side. I'd say that looks about even. And now we're gonna take this edge and move it over so it's roughly, roughly the same width as this. So this is, twice as much as it is. Let's see. I'm just kind of talking to myself here. Don't mind me. All right. So I'm going to look at this from the bottom and just make sure that everything is aligned properly. It is. And actually the way we can do this for real is just dissolve this edge and put in, whoops, dissolve that edge, please. There we go. And put in a loop cut in the middle of that. So now we have it looks like this is at a nice 90 degree angle and everything is even. So now I'm going to grab this row and this row. I'm going to come to the bottom and I'm going to hit Alt E, extrude region vertex normals, turn off our snapping 0 0.05, and then we're going to hit S for even thickness so that everything's at 90 degree angles. 
And there we go. We can delete these bottom faces here. Let's make sure that these are even though. Looks like they are, so that's good. Let's delete these bottom faces as well, XF. And then, yeah, that should be good. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab this edge here. I'm just gonna bevel it. Add in some divisions there. We're gonna grab this one and this one. So I'm Alt-clicking and then Shift-Alt-clicking in order to grab those loops. And then I'm just gonna bevel this. Like, mm. we can do it like this. And then what we can do is turn on our snap mode. We can take this edge, not this one, this one, and double click over here, take this one, double click there. And essentially what that does is, actually yeah, we wanna leave that one down there. So we can do this here, double click there, and that just kind of merges those vertices together, which is why I turned this on. I can try to merge here. No, I don't want to merge there. So we're going to leave those extra loops in here. This may cause some problems later. Actually, no, no, we're going to, we're going to dissolve them. X dissolve edges. Um, and then we can take this and we can kind of double tap G and slide that there. And we're going to do the same here. Double tap G and slide it down. Double tap G, slide it back up. So we're kind of averaging that out. And there we have these nice, smooth, rounded, um, kind of frames for the outside of our mailbox. And then I'm going to unhide all this. We're going to select everything, go to the side view, and we're going to go GZ to move this straight up, turn on our snapping, um, make sure that we're using increment snapping, GZ, and something like that should be okay, I think. So now what we want to do is grab the frame, go to the side, Z vertex mode. So I'm going to SZ0 so we can make sure that we're flat on the Z axis, extrude straight down to the ground. And now we've got the frame for our mailbox in order. Let's grab this part, come to the side again, go into that mode, um, wireframe mode. And I'm just going to grab the vertices here and I'm going to extrude these straight down on Z. And let's bring it to about there. And a little bit further, maybe something like that. And then if I hit Control E and bridge edge loops, it will create the bottom half of our mailbox. So there's that. I'm going to open this up and let's see. Let's grab this edge and this edge. Hit F to create that face. This edge and this edge. Hit F to create that face. And there we go. We have the beginnings of our mailbox. So the next thing we want to do is give this frame a little bit of thickness. So let's go back to the bottom again, hit the five key, switch into edit mode, and then select everything. And then we're going to zoom in here at this cross section so we can actually see what we're doing. Alt E, and then region vertex normals, turn off snapping. We want to extrude it like this. We want S on to make sure that we are snapping like this. And then let's try 0 0.025, enter. And that, that's looking pretty good to me. So let's uh, take a look. That actually might be a bit thick. Yeah, let's undo that. That's a little bit thick. So let's grab everything here. Alt-E, extrude region vertex normals. Turn off our snapping. Make sure S is turned on 0 0.01. Mm, it's a little too small. 0 0.015, that should be good. And let's just grab all of these and make sure we recalculate our normals. So let's control N and let's do this. There we go. That's a little bit better. So now we have this frame on the outside. It's nice and rounded. We have the lip that comes off of here and then the lip that comes straight down, which is near the side there. So that's what we've got going on. Let's isolate this inside portion and figure out how to cap off this side part. So. Let's see, how many vertices do we have? 25 vertices, so let's put a loop cut in here so we can make it 26. And we're just gonna go Control F and say grid fill. And that looks horrible, so we're going to change our spans until we get something that looks somewhat acceptable. Simple blending. And we'll leave that turned off. So let's keep going with this. Ay, ay, ay. 
can only go up to 12. How strange. All right, so the other thing that we can do is just undo this. And we can grab this edge and we can bevel it out a bunch. And let's see, where's even mode? There should be an even option here. Clamp overlap. Oh, clamp overlap would be nice, actually. That's that's pretty good. So let's dissolve this instead. Dissolve that edge and control R. Put in a bunch here. Maybe five cuts. Between five or six. I think we're going to do five. Let's see what happens when we do five. Or we could try to do, because we did 48, so that gives us, let's see. Try to do, let's do 12. Let's see what happens when we do 12. So now let's grab this edge, control F, grid fill, select two edge loops. Okay, so we're running into a problem there. So let's let's try five. And see if it gives us any better options here. Control F, grid fill. There we go. Uh, that's still hideous, but we'll try to make it work. So it wants to do seven. That's not too awful. So there's a, an obvious pull right here. Uh, F6, please. Thank you. I mean, the other way that I could do this is just manually. I'm going to forget this for now, though. Let's just undo this. We'll come back to this later and solve that at a later point. Let's, uh, let's do Alt-H. Alt-H, there we go. And hmm, we should probably start to address the central part here, which is where our mailbox is going to be inserted. So we'll do this, SX0, switch to vertex mode, change this to active element, deselect, reselect, switch into wireframe mode, align this with the top, make sure snapping is turned on, otherwise it's pointless. Uh, what are you snapping with? Ah, grid increment. We don't want that. We want vertex mode. Hopefully I didn't just open up that other application. There we go. Okay. And now if I go into solid mode, I can SZ and we can get that nice, um, <clears throat> that nice slope there. Whoops. Let's turn off snapping for this. So something, something about there should be good. That's looking all right. And there's also... I think I may have gone a little too far with this. Uh, well, if I were to return this here, let's enter. Let's actually isolate this because it'll be easier for me to view it. Uh, shift H. Whoops, wrong thing. This one, Shift H there. Okay. Let's grab this vertex, undo that, grab this vertex, and bring it over here. Let's turn on snapping. There we go. Would that be better? No, I don't think it would be. All right, so we'll just leave this. It's fine. I'm going to put in a loop cut here, and we're going to put one in here and bring it up. Just turn off snapping mode. There we go. So something like that. <clears throat> and <clears throat> Alt H. Sorry about the uh, throat clearing. I'm, I have a little bit of a cold. Let's do 0. 0.75. No. Let's do 0. 0.77. 0. 0.77. Point seven nine. Yeah, 0. 0.79. So we just want to stop this bevel right before we get to this part. So now what we can do is we can extrude this just a little bit. And then we can change this to normal. And we can scale it, but we don't want to scale it on the Y. And actually, I believe this part comes out a lot further. Let's shift Y. And we'll just do that. <clears throat> so if we if we zoom in here. We can see that this does protrude out a bit. Probably not this far, though. So let's bring it back. Let's not go nuts with that. And then we can take this edge right here, and we can draw it in just a little bit. Oh, boy. There, something like that. 
That's a little bit better. It's still a little bit high. Just move it, move it back down. There we go. Something like that. That looks good. That works for me. And then we want to do the same thing here on the front. We're just going to extrude it out. And then S to Z. And then we're going to grab this edge and we're going to double tap G and kind of bring it down just a little bit. Just to smooth it out there. And that's this portion right here. It's got some rivets on the front. I'm not going to be doing every single one of the rivets on this thing. I'll do some on the side and on the bottom here. But the rest of these, I'll kind of leave them be. Um, we can come in here and add some detail to the feet. So let's go to the front view or the side view, I should say. I'm going to hit K for the uh, knife tool. And we want to hit C for angle constraint and Z for cut through. So those are both on. And we can just slice right through there, click there, and accept that. Enter for the acceptance. Um, we can turn on our snapping to grid increment. Make sure absolute grid alignment is on. And um, well, for some reason, it's being a pain. There we go. Uh, let's see. It's about down. Yeah, let's say about there. And now what we can do is we can grab the faces on the outside of this. So from here to here and from shift click and control click there from there to there and there to there. Let's look at it from the bottom. <clears throat> Let's hit alt E, grab our region vertex normals, turn off our snapping, bring this out, hit S to make sure that we are even. There we go. And let's do that. So now we have this little, this little lip right here, which looks good. And then we'll create the feet. Um, yeah, let's do that now while we're here. So we can just put a cut there and a cut there, grab both, bring them down, GZ, something like that. We'll do the same thing. Click there, control click there, shift click here, control click here. And then again, looking from the bottom, whoops. Uh, let's zoom in, let's hit Alt E, region vertex normals, and then S, and then something like that to get the feet. Let's move out of ortho mode. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to slide this edge over to there, somewhere like in the middle. Let's see, let's go even. So let's do point zero, yeah, something like that. Let's repeat the same operation over here. GG. We're gonna go even. And then point zero. Yep. And then it's mirrored, so we're good over there. Let's get this one here. And I'm not going to create this circular-ish thing here I, I want to go kind of quickly here I don't want to spend too much time I have a bad habit of that so uh, e.0 there we go and we'll do the same thing on this side I'm, I'm trying to save some time e.0 there all right so that looks good to me I, I don't think it's completely necessary that we go stir crazy trying to get that exact shape you can imagine you could probably put some bolts in here uh, similar to this but that's not completely necessary or just one over here. We could even we could even take this face on the normal and just kind of drag it out. So here's a good way to do this. We can grab both of these and say individual origins normal. And then we can say scale with restraint on the uh well, that's just scaling them out. I want to move them out. Let's try this. There we go. So move in that direction, and there you can see we could get a nice little you know, bolt in here if we really needed to. So that's not bad. I'm just gonna undo that because it, it doesn't look all that great to me. That looks fine. Or we could we can just do it a little bit. Something like that. You can get a bolt in there. No biggie. And then we can we can scale it up. So you just bring it in a little bit. There. That looks good. Okay, so moving along, we want to let's see, what do we want to do next? Let's get these little details in on the front. And then there's this bar in here that we need to do. I've already created this 
and then on the side. So let's look at getting some of the detail on the front. So we're going to put in a loop cut here and bring this about that high. And then we're going to bevel this a bunch. So something like that, probably. Now this is creating a lot of density on our mailbox. So we're going to be careful about that. Um, in fact, let me, I need to take this, this whole edge here and using global mode, we're just going to bring this down. And then this, we can also bring down these two, we can bring up and this we can bring up. Just make sure I remember to do that across the whole thing. And it looks like I screwed up. Okay, so let's grab the whole thing, bring that down. And we're gonna grab all of these, bring them up, about there. Grab this one, bring that up. And grab this one and bring that up. I'll show you why I'm doing this. So we're gonna extrude this, something like that. You know, SZ to make it thin, look like it's something that you can pinch with your fingers. Uh, SY to kind of triangulate it there. So it's, well, it's more of a trapezoid shape, I should say. SY. There we go. And then what we're going to do with these points are we are going to move this edge up just a little bit. I alt selected that. Just keep that in mind so it went all the way around the whole thing. We're going to grab these two parts. I don't like these, so I'm just going to redo these. So I'm going to get rid of these. We're going to dissolve these edges. Take this one, and we're just going to bevel this something like that so they're even. So now we're going to take these two and extrude them forward. We're going to extrude them again about that far. We want them to be underneath this part here. And then grab the top face and the bottom face on the inside here. And then we're going to hit control E bridge edge loops. And now you can see we've got this square that comes around. So we're going to grab this edge right here and this edge right here. Let's hit the period key to kind of focus on those. And then let's see, we need to grab this edge, this edge, and this edge, and this one. And just, whoops, not these edges. And just bring them back so that this is about square in between here. And then the way that we could solve this problem is we could grab this edge and slide it forward. This edge, slide it up. This one, slide it down. And the bottom one, and slide it forward. We could grab that by alt-clicking, shift-alt-clicking that, and then kind of beveling this just a little bit. Actually, that, that made it even worse, <laughs> unfortunately. So what we'll do is we'll grab this and this, we'll bevel them, add in a division between, and now we have this rounded bit. But because we did that with a bevel operation instead of a move operation, we need to hit W, remove doubles. You'll see we removed eight vertices, and now everything is interpolated or interpreted by Blender to be soft here because there aren't any extra vertices, although we may need to come in here and give this some smooth shading. Shade smooth, and let's see, um, make sure this is set, okay. Let me hit the T key, smooth shading, there we go. So it's looking pretty good so far, yeah. We could grab this edge, bring it just a little bit further down, and this edge, bring it a little further up, oops. There, that's, that's pretty nice looking. So that's what we want for that. And then we need to create this triangular, well, not triangular. It's like a trapezoid again, type of shape there. So we're going to put in another cut. I'm going to bring it up. Something like that. Right about there is probably good. And then we're going to put another cut in the middle. Right click so it stays in the middle. And then we're going to bevel this out to roughly, let's see. I don't know, it's got a pretty good slope on it. So something like that. And then we're just going to join these by selecting both vertices and pressing the J key. And then now we gotta get clever about how we do this. So 
I'm going to put a loop cut right here and we're going to bring it close so that it's small because it's really, it really doesn't have that much thickness to it. If you look at this thing, it looks like a pretty flat piece of metal that's sitting very close to the surface. So bring it in like that. And then here we can just delete these three faces. XF, let's go in on the inside and kind of take a look and make sure that we don't have any extra stuff in here that's causing problems. It looks pretty good. We're having some Z fighting over here, but that's from the frames on the outside, which is fine. Let's see. Let's grab this edge. I need to zoom in. Grab the wrong one. There we go. And then this edge and the last edge right here. Grab that one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our vertex snapping. And I'm just going to extrude this straight down. Well, let's bring it back up. So we're going to go GZ and line it up there. And I have to be careful. Yeah, let's undo that. Because I have merging on, so I, I don't want everything to kind of merge immediately. I want to wait and have control over things. So we're going to just double tap this in so it merges there. And we're going to do the same over here. Grab this. Nope, here. Double tap G. Move it in. Grab this edge. GZ. Line it up there. That'll merge. And we're going to do the same here. Grab that GZ, line it up there, that'll merge as well. And now we have this nice thin flap of metal. Let's take a look at the back side. We do have a face on the back that we can get rid of, I believe. XF. Yep. We didn't need that face there. I guess that was left over from the extrusion when we moved that down. So we got rid of it. So now everything looks contiguous and it's clean and organized. I'm just going to hit control A, control N, or sorry, A, control N. So we're selecting everything and recalculating our normals to ensure that everything is operating properly in terms of the oh, direction our normals are facing in. All right. So now let's take a look at creating this rounded bar section here that allows the door to pivot. So we're going to do that here. We're going to grab this edge. Mm. I think this edge here should work and we're just going to bevel that the same way we did underneath something like that and let's go from here to here and here to here zoom in using the period key on the number pad and then we're just going to extrude and then extrude again I'm just going to grab this grab this control e bridge edge loops do the same thing grab this top edge holding alt and shift alt and then we're just going to bevel it and add a single subdivision in between so now we have this rounded part here just like that although it seems like we made a mistake yes we did so undo this all right make sure that we're selecting these side uh, polygons as well before we bridge our edge loops so do that now we can hold alt and alt shift and click on these so now if I bevel them all the way and add an edge loop or a division there, I can now switch into vertex mode, select everything, W, remove, doubles, and there we have that nice rounded bar section there. Now what we need to do is we need to take a look at this. Let's put a divide in the middle of this and a divide here as well. And this is just getting a little bit picky. Um, actually, I'm going to undo that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a divide here and then I'm going to move it over to about 0.6 there, negative 0.6. Do the same thing here, negative 0.6. And then what I want to do is I want to take this face and this face, this face and this face, and delete them. We're going to do the same on the other half. Uh, really, what we should be doing is working in mirror mode, but I want to avoid uh, running into problems with it. Actually, you know what? We'll do, we'll do it. We'll do it against my better judgment. XF, and then we have these sections on the inside that didn't get cut because they were, well, they were on the inside. So switch to face mode, select, select that, select that. XF, hit L over here, XF to delete that. And now we're gonna, whoops, hop into object mode. 
we're going to apply our rotation and scale as well as our location. And then we're going to hop into the modifier stack and turn on a mirror modifier. Switch to Y, turn on the clipping. All right, there we go. So now we can just work on this side and it will remedy any issues that we have. I'm actually gonna merge this down here. Uh, no, let's not do that. Let's get rid of this face and this face, XF. And then we're gonna grab this edge and bridge it to this with an F and this with F, whoops, grab the wrong one. There we go. And now we can consider creating a face here. So F and let's grab the vertex here and hit J. I mean, ideally we could just leave that off and leave that as a quad, but I wanna triangulate it so we can be explicit about our intentions. That way Blender knows uh, exactly what we're looking for. We can also remove this section on the inside. So let's get rid of this and close up this hole here. Not there, but here. Um, actually, let's do it like this. Go to the back side, XF, delete that. And it looks like, so that gets closed. Here's that triangular hole I was trying to fill just a minute ago. And we can go from here to here and connect that with J. That solves. So here, here's the reason why. If you take a look at this, we created this quad here, but because it's a convex quad, it's non-manifold. Um, convex or concave, actually, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I think, I think this might be concave. Anyhow, um, <clears throat> I, I know that this is not a piece of geometry that's manifold because you can see Blender's trying to connect these two here even though we have a vertex there. So by connecting these two vertices and creating a tri two triangles there, um, we're being more explicit in telling Blender, okay, we want this face here as a triangle and this face here. And so that removes that error. That was the same thing happening up here. So that's what I meant by being more explicit with Blender and making sure that it knows what we want. Um, let's try to hit L on this. Of course, it doesn't work. Um, I'm not quite... Okay, that's why. So if we go XF, and I can hopefully hit L on this. Yep, XF. And the reason why we can delete that inner portion is because we want this to be a rod that's attached to the door, and we don't need that inner portion. So this part here, this empty square, we can grab this and fill that in. And then the same here, we can fill this in and then there we can go we see that same error happening here so let's just fix that and just connect there and there we go problem solved so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete these faces xf and i'm going to take these faces oops let's not make that mistake let's get that out of our way real quickly and that's just removed by hitting control space and i can extrude this and bring it to the edge we can hit x F and here I have to think about let's get rid of these back faces. So here now I have to consider how I'm going to manage this. So here let's let's separate this. So we could hit P. I'm gonna hit v, no, we're gonna hit P. Select selection, and then this is gonna be its own separate object. We're gonna merge these back together. Was hoping I could just rip them, but it wouldn't let me so control j let's come in here let's hit l on this and now we can hit control f and intersect knife and what that does is it puts cuts in here where we want them to be and so now i can remove this row of vertices from here to here xf and then you can see we have this cut in here so now what i can do is i can select these vertices right here Say W, remove doubles, and we've gotten rid of eight vertices on, along this area here. So that's good. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. And so now we have to look at what we've created over here and see if we can match this up with these extrusions there. Um, hmm. Let's isolate this. So here's a bit of a creative problem solving issue here. And I think that the way I want to solve this is actually going to be handled by merging these here. So let's merge this down. Let's merge this down. And then what I'm going to do is select here, select here, say Alt-M, and then hit C for center. So Alt-M is 
merging um, and then hit shift R to repeat that operation. And because this is empty on the side, you can see that we've now returned to the original number of, uh, of uh, vertices on this side. It's just that we have a bunch of triangles here and we can figure out some creative ways to solve this, but we'll, we'll get around to that in a moment. So let's zoom in over here and let's see. Um, let's move this up here. Nope, I want this to be, let's turn off snapping. Why? Why don't you want to move in the direction I want you to move in? So really what I'm trying to do is get this vertex to snap here. So there we can do that. Undo this. This vertex here should snap there. This vertex here should snap here. This vertex here should snap here. I'm using the vertices that were defined by the cut and forcing these radial bits to conform to them. And then now I can delete these faces here. And some of these are not in a good way. It's so like this really long one here. Let's go XF. And the way, yeah, we need to take this vertex here and bring it down there. And then this vertex here can come. Actually, we need to delete this vertex here. XF. And then there's another issue. So this edge right here, we're going to subdivide it. So W subdivide. And now we have a vertex in the middle here. Let's unselect that and G and snap to here. So this is not the most ideal solution because we've got these really elongated triangles and we've got some end gons actually or some, yeah, these really elongated triangles. So this is not ideal, um, but it will work. So if we back out, you can see that it is actually functioning properly, but it's not ideal. So let's mark sharp here. So that way we can get the separation of those normals. We can also do the same. Mm, no, it's, I think it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's good. Okay. So there we go. We've got that pivoting bar there. Like I said, this is not an ideal sol solution to here. Um, if I had more time, I would come through and see if I could put a loop in here and see if I can reflow some of this topology. But for now, because it's a flat surface, it'll work. So like, like I said, there's not a huge deal here. We might run into some shading errors if something gets thrown out of whack there, but I'm going to hit Alt-H and just re-reveal everything. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, we're going to have to close off the sides here. And I'm going to use an end gone Again, it's not ideal, but... You know, it will work for our purposes. I'm just going to apply this mirror modifier now. And there we go. So if I isolate, whoops, let's undo that. If I isolate this portion, you can see it is working. And I could even take this and triangulate it. Oh, that's hideous. Nope, we're not going to do that. Um, if I did this, I could, might be able to triangulate this a little more successfully now. Yeah, there we go. So we could use a radial triangulation that will keep keep things from breaking too horribly. Although this would be, this entire model would not be candidate for sub D, um, subdivision surface modeling because, well, here I can show you. So if we threw a subdivision surface modeling um, modifier on here, so where is it, subdivision, you can see now we would get a whole lot of ugly deformation simply because our geometry is not optimized for sub D. Um, so we would want to go back in and make sure that we didn't have this radial star pattern on the side and uh, all of this fun stuff going on here with these little pinched areas. But because we're not doing sub D, we wanna just be hand modeling this. All of what we've done will actually work. It'll work in a game engine. It just wouldn't be very good for animation or deformation. Fortunately for us, this is more of a prop, so we should be okay with this. Uh, yeah, it'll work. And then if we wanted like pure quad topology, we could actually delete every other, every nth one of these things here and turn it into quads, like, like something like that and delete them, but I'm just gonna leave them as, as is. And then there we go. We've got the start of our mailbox. We need to add in this little medallion piece on the front. So let's do that really quickly. Um, we're gonna select both of these, Shift S cursor to selected. 
And then we're going to, well, we'll make it its own object. Mesh, cylinder, and then F6. We're going to turn this to 12, would be fine. And we're going to rotate 90 degrees on the Y. And say this is, I don't know what, 0 0.01. Yep, and a depth of 0 0.01. This we could actually make 0.1. Mm, it's a little big, maybe 0 0.075. It's a little bit closer. Yeah, we'll leave it at 0 0.075. We can always go from there. And 0 0.01 depth is fine. We'll do that um, because we can always pull this forward. So let's look through the back side like that. And then we can take this edge and kind of scale it in just a little bit. We can pull it forward. Whoops, turn off our snapping, pull it forward just a little bit. Scale it in. Um, actually, I'm going to bring it back. We're going to extrude, scale it. And we're looking at this piece right here. This is actually a pretty good resolution image for this. Um, grab this edge, kind of bevel it out a bit. There we go. And I mean, we could grab the whole thing and just bevel it as well. Whoa, that's some trippy, trippy stuff. That's not what you want. Um, so let's undo that. Let's see what we got. Let's set this to smooth shading. So I think that's O. No. W smooth shading. Smooth shading is a shade smooth. There we go. Uh, that also didn't do what I wanted to do. What's going on here? Shade smooth. Boom. There. Okay. That was weird. Don't know why I was doing that. Very strange. Let's just double check this. Make sure we removed any doubles. Okay. We're good. Um, we can try actually to subdivide smooth. See if this will round it. Unfortunately, it, it did a little bit. It didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. So ideally, when I was creating this, I should have used more than 12. Um, in this case, more than 12 divisions. So what I'll do is I'll just put divisions in between here. And then I'll show you what I'll do. So this is kind of cheating. You really, you really wouldn't want to do this because <laughs> this is... This is kind of a waste of time, in my opinion. Um, you should just create the right amount of geometry first and then go from there. But hey, when you're trying to brute force through a project, it never really hurts to, uh, you know, just make it do what you want it to do. So uh, why are you being a pain? Uh, shift. Ah, okay, let's undo that. We're going to go from the median point instead of... Whoa, what is happening? Sheesh, uh, global, let's say, I don't want to do individual origins because that's going to, let's go from 3D cursor. Okay, there we go. So now if we hold down shift and we restrain the X so you can see we've got locking X global and we can just say one. Let's see. Oh, we don't want one. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, so we did want one. And there we go. It's nice and round, just the way we wanted. Perfect. And it's nice and low poly for the most part. Let's bring this up here where it belongs. And then what we can do is we can grab this edge here. And let's see. We want to create a face out of that edge, and then we're going to inset it with I. Yep. And then we're going to grab this row of polygons. We're going to inset those, holding down Shift, so something like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to push that back in space. So we're going to go GX and just move it back a little bit. We don't want to move it back a lot. And there we go. And then we're going to grab this face, and we're going to inset it again. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to take the top four here. Um, let's see. Top four, top five. There we go. So the top six, I should say. We're going to go SZ0. Turn off our snapping. That's annoying. Um, change this to... Um, Change it to active elements, switch this to vertex, and then do this, SC0. 
Let's see, zero, come now. There we go. We need to turn off our snapping. Do the same here between these, SC zero, from here to here, SY zero, and from here to here, SY zero. And there, now we have a nice square pattern here. And then what we can do is we can scale along the Y to get this sort of keyhole thing going on. And then we can take and extrude this back. There we go. That's looking pretty good, although we do have some issues with fastening. So we can take this and we can say uh, SX0, flatten it. Still some issues with our shading and fastening. So what I'm gonna do is, here's where we need to turn off our snapping. And I know I'm being a little bit finicky with this. Let's see, 0 0.01. I'm being finicky with this, but it it is somewhat of my joy to be finicky about things. So there, the inside of that is solved. And then what we could do is we could take the knife tool. And let's go from the front view. Let's right click, front view, orthographic, deselect everything, close that side panel. And let's go with a angle constraint. We'll go straight up. We'll grab that, we'll do another angle constraint to come straight across, straight down and straight across and then accept that. And now you can see how we're kind of controlling our edge there. So if I take this and this and we just scale that in, S, Y, what are we doing? Why, why is that happening? Oh, that's why. We need median point on. SY to bring it in. We can bring it really close to that edge, but not cross it. Oh, we need to turn this off here. There we go. Now we can bring it close and not have that issue of merging. And then come over here, shift and select. Ooh, we did merge that. Oh no, we didn't. We're good. So let's see here. Grab this to this. Uh, why did that? Hmm. I know why. Okay, that's all right. We're just going to eyeball this. It'll be fine. So bring this up so it's about even. And we'll do the same here from here. And then bring this down. Did I do that correctly? Looks like I need these vertices here. And we need to bring them down to about there. And let's take a look. There we go. That's a lot cleaner. It's not perfect, but it is a lot cleaner. Um, we could probably reflow some of this topology along the outside, some of these inside parts. So, for example, we could take this, which is XF, so there's no face there. And then what we could do is we could take this edge and move it over. Oops, let's undo that. Grab this. And we want this edge, this edge, and this edge. We can move it over. Oh boy, what just happened there? Why are you doing that? Oh, because oh, some of these are just too close to each other. All right, so let's do this. There we go. Ugh, it's ugly. Okay, so we'll do it with individual verts. And there. No. Come on, Blender. There. Please, Blender. There. Oh my god. Why? Why you gotta be like this, Blender? Why are you like this? G snapped there, and it wants to snap here. All right, so we're gonna force it. We're gonna go Alt M L. There we go. You you can't defeat me, Blender. I know what I'm doing. There, there, and there. Ugh. Alt M L. Okay, and then bring this up here. Alt M L. So there we have these two points pointing here. Let's see, what else can we do here? We can take this, oh boy, let's turn that off. Turn that there, 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 and we got our snapping on. We can just line that up underneath. And then, ooh, this is gonna be doozy. What happened over here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I see. So let's grab these verts, all them L. Shift R here, Shift R here, Shift R here, here, Shift R. There we go. 
And we'll just take these. Move them over here. Yep, that looks fine. And there, now some of these shading errors have completely disappeared. And if we wanted to, um, if we wanted to subdiv this, it wouldn't be so awful. Actually, let's deselect everything, grab these and grab these. There we go. Line that there, grab these and these. Ah, uh, deselect. So line these here. Let's make sure that these are all aligned. Um, let's do active element. Deselect, reselect, um, deselect everything down here. SC0, yep, they are aligned. So let's grab all of these. Oh boy. There. And there. Okay, cool. So there, that's all aligned. We can do the same over on this side. And this is just some of the cleanup that you kind of want to do in order to have nice topology. Uh, this is should be, that should be all good. If I'm remembering correctly from the opposite side. And this here, like that. And then we got to clean up the bottom the same way we cleaned up the top. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. So Alt M L. And then we're just going to Shift R this. Shift R. Shift R and Shift R. Whoa. There we go. And then we can take these and we can align them here. Uh, this should be fine in the middle. This one we're going to align here. And then there. Alt M L. Shift R. Shift R, Shift R, Shift R, nope, Alt M, ah, Alt M L, there we go. Okay, now it's sh nice and clean for the most part. We do have some minor shading errors, also the clipping errors, so just point one there and zoom out. And that, that looks fine, that looks clean enough. Okay, the last thing that we need to do is select this edge and Hit Control E. We want the inner edge right there. Control E and grid fill. Um, I don't know. Sorry, Control F and grid fill. There it is. And it'll form a nice grid. Of course, Blender has to be a pain with the way it interp interprets this. So let's, let's do that. Turn off simple blending. And that should fix most of the issues that we have here. Um, let's see can grab this and we can yeah okay well we'll do it like this oh boy oh blender why you gotta be like this let's turn off that and just get our selection in order or here I can do from here to there Oh, of course, it doesn't want to, <laughs> Blender just, it's it's intent on making me suffer today. That's okay. There we go. And then shift click there, and then we're going to control click into here, and control click down to here, and onto this vertex. Okay, so I actually only want to do half of this, so let's unselect that. And then we're going to say SY0, there we go. And then we're going to do the same here. So click there. Control click here, control click to this one, and then unselect and reselect, and then SY0. There we go. So now everything is nice and evenly spaced. I mean, we are getting some very minor shading errors in here. It's not a big, huge deal, especially when we're zoomed out. That actually looks really nice. It's some relatively clean topology. Obviously, we got some triangles up here. We could take and bring these over. So like we merged these points here, we could actually bring these over and simply allow this to be dissected in the middle. I honestly don't mind the way it is. If we were gonna do some subdivision surface uh, modeling here, we would want to, yeah, we would wanna bring these over and then turn this into a quad by dissolving this edge right here. But for this, this should be fine. We'll just leave it. Uh, this is some. This is still some very clean modeling. I'm actually quite happy with the way this turned out, and we'll look at that in perspective mode. That's perfectly fine. And there we go. We've got that round like button. We can bring that up just a little bit. And then if we really wanted to, we could 
we could intersect this here and create a boolean so that it is part of the surface of the um, mailbox, but I'm I'm not going to go that far. That's, that's a little too much in my opinion. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a handle onto the door, and then we'll add some rivets. So I'm just going to save this real quickly. Um, how long we've we been running for? Uh, about 55 minutes. That's not too bad. So let's come to the top here. I'm going to, let's see, grab all these, hit control and make sure my normals are aligned. And we're gonna center ourselves up here. So we'll grab those two faces, shift S uh, cursor to selected. There we go. And let's just add in, let's deselect that and add in a cylinder. And of course we need it facing in the opposite direction. So uh, I think we're 90 on the Y, let's check. Yeah, okay, then we're gonna do 16 here. We could do 16 or we could do 32. Because we were lacking last time, I'm gonna do 32 here. And a radius of point, point zero 0.05 might work there. No, nah, I want 0.75, just like the thing below. Whoa, 0 0.075, excuse me. <laughs> it's a little too much there. And let's add in a depth of 0 0.05. There we go. That'll work. That'll work quite well, actually. And let's kind of shift this out a bit. So we're going to hit GX, turn off snapping, and just kind of bring that out. I'm also going to bring this edge a little closer. So GX, and just bring it yeah, about there. That's good. And then what we're going to do is make sure the entire surface of this is smooth. So we're going to hit W shade smooth, which is the A key. I'll keep that in mind from here on out. And then we want to select all of these edges and change our pivot mode to median point. Or what we could do is simply hit um, shift S and then cursor to selected or cursor to center. That's fine. And then we want to drop in a cube. So we have this nice little cube here. And we're going to shape this cube from the front to be a handle. So we're going to go SY and something like that. So let's go 0 0.45. 0 0.45. That looks good. And it's a nice even distance around. I'm kind of trying to think the way a machine would in regards to let me just remove this back face on the F, there we go, okay. I know it gets a little confusing to kind of tell what you're looking at when you're, you're working in uh, this mode here. And then we want this lined up with our 3D cursor. So let's turn on snapping, snapping to vertex, and we're just gonna go, turn on our control there, there we go. And let's take this and kind of bring it out a bit, turning off our snapping. Uh, this is looking a little bit large. So I'm going to grab all of the faces here, go into individual origins and scale these by the normals. That's looking a little bit better. And let's make it a little thinner. So let's go in the front view. S Y, S Z, another S Y. We want it to be. I don't know how how thin do I want this to be? That's that should be okay, I think. And I'm going to extrude this so it's roughly square on top. There we go. And then we're going to extrude this over, say about there. Maybe a little bit further. Something like that looks good. And then here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this edge, make sure the snapping or the merging is turned on. Oh boy. Make sure this is set to global and active. I will do median. Please. What are you doing? What is happening? Stop that. Jeez, what is that? That is not okay. Oh, yeah. Tell you, Blender, it makes it, it tries to make me suffer sometimes. If I wasn't a smarter man, it would win. 
Okay, we're going to add in some extra subdivisions. I don't want I don't want to cut down the center here. So we want an even number here so that way our smoothing is well nice and smooth. And we need to select this object and set our sh uh, shading to smooth. There we go. So that's looking good. It is looking a bit tall. So let's grab this to this shift click and control click and then just say S zero or S Z and bring it down a bit. So it's not as tall of a handle. There we go. Okay, so now we have to do the tedious task of connecting these two things together. So we know that there's 32 around here and there's four around here. So let's subdivide this thing a bunch. Put a cut there and a cut there. And then what we could do is we could take these and actually let's undo that. So uh, let's do this one, two, three. So that's four on top. So Four times four is 16, so let's do this. Put that there, one, two, three, so that's four, four. So that should be 16 around. Let's double check, make sure I'm doing math all right. Yep, 16. So now let's select this entire thing and hit W and hit subdivide, and now that should be 32 all the way around. Although now we have a whole lot of extra edges that aren't holding a whole bunch of data for any particular purpose, so let's dissolve. And these edges here are also, some of these aren't holding any particular important purpose. So let's grab every other one of these. I'm just going to turn that handle off. So it's not in the way. Let's look at that, that. And this one here, X dissolve edge. Yep, there we go. Um, let's undo that. So I'm just now figuring that Let's undo this, that the way I beveled this corner was not very advantageous. So I'm gonna have to undo a whole lot. Keep going. Uh, can I not undo anymore? Oh, please. Okay, so we're just gonna delete these faces and these. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this edge and we're gonna flatten it on the X. There we go. And extrude it out along the X until it's about a square on the top. And fill in that face take this face over here and extrude it out there we go and then of course like i noticed before the top is a bit it's a bit thick uh, on the z only something like that maybe like that yeah it's looking good maybe a little more there yep okay so now what i want to do is let's see hmm. let's just bevel this making sure that the snap is on and then we're just going to go like that and then vertex mode w merge doubles we removed 12 vertices and then we're going to we can do the same on the inside but really what this should be is half so this here when we do this it should be half as many as we did on the outside i don't exactly remember how many did on i did on the outside so let's see, we had one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's what, five? And one, two, three, four, five. Um, wait, let me undo this and actually pay attention this time. Okay, so we're going to grab this edge. We're going to bevel it. I want it to be an even number. So let's do five. Okay, and then we're going to do, we're just going to go all the way. And then we're gonna repeat this operation here with shift R, but we're not gonna go all the way like we just did. So we'll do about half of what that was. So maybe 0 0.01, there we go. And then we can take these edges here and the ones on the bottom and dissolve them. And then what we can do is we can delete this top face and this bottom face XF. And we can grab this edge, and that edge. Okay, that works. Do this and then hit Control E and bridge edge loops. There we go. Uh, whoa, that's weird. All right, we'll do it like this. We'll go, not G, but F. And then here, F, select all these extra vertices, remove doubles, because we had 12 of those there. 
And then now, if I hit L, I can W, smooth shading. And now I can bridge from here to here. Hopefully that's the right number. It looks like it might be, I don't know. I'm losing my mind. Control F and um, Control E, bridge edge loops. Yep, so we don't have enough on one side. So I should have reduced it. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, these should bridge. Um, all right, let's try. Oh. Oh, 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 oh I'm, I'm stupid. There we go. That solved the problem. <laughs> uh, it's been a long day. All right, let's uh, repeat that operation. Won't work. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, bridge edge loops. Let's create a face. Yikes. Why are you doing that to me? Ay, ay, ay. Blender, stop. Please. There we go. Now you're finally behaving. Okay. So now we want to I'm gonna change this to 0 0.01 again. Okay, so now I know that we have four here. So this looks better. I, I know we could have just left it. Not many people would have seen it, but I would have known and that would have killed me inside. So let's take this whole thing and go W. Uh, subdivide and now we have 16. We're gonna subdivide it one more time and let's grab this this, this, <laughs> this, this, and this, and we're going to hit X and dissolve edges. And then here we should take every other one. So this one, this one, this one, and you can tell because they're flat in between. So we don't need to keep those flat edges because they're not actually defining anything. So dissolve those edges. There we go. And now every single one of these should be defining something important. Um, actually, we could probably do something like this. Yeah, there we go. Now it's proper. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So you could, I could tell, let's undo that. I could tell because you can see this is entirely flat. This is entirely flat. This is entirely flat. This is entirely flat. And this is entirely flat. So none of these three loops in the middle are actually defining anything important. So I deleted them. I, I dissolved them. So, uh, and the topology still looks good and it's still clean. And we should have a matching edge flow there. So if I hit control E, E and bridge these edge loops. Boom, we have that nice option there. The only problem is that what was supposed to be happening was this was supposed to be aligned with uh, this right here. And we want to use the X. There we go, like that. Boom. Okay, so now I'm going to take this. We're going to bevel that. We're just going to leave it at two though. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this, and we're going to do mini bevels. Jeez, not so many. Like this. And there we go. That looks nice. Uh, now I'm unhappy with this. Um, let's, how do I want to do this? Let's do it like this. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. I wish there was like a fong angle restriction where you could make selections that were restricted on the degree angle. So like if I switched it to 90 degrees because of the differentiation between this, this, this side here to this side and this side here to this side is 90 degrees, it would select just this part. I'm sure there's some kind of function in here uh, for that, but I'd have to figure it out. And I uh, don't want to Google stuff in the middle of recording a video. So Let's do this, and I want to increase the size of that just a little bit, just a little bit, yeah, something like that. I mean, having it down there is not bad either. You know what? I'm going to leave it like that. All right, so now what I can do is I can hit L and select this whole thing, and then we're going to turn on our grid increment snapping, and we're just going to move this over on the Y. Whoops, let's, let's not move it yet. And we need to remove all of these faces here. So let's do this. 
XF, hit the L key here, XF. Whoa. Stop that XF, and then we're going to we're gonna grab this whole thing, turn this onto active element, switch to vertex. There we go. Make sure that's there. Turn on our handle, and then we can snap over to the middle of the world. So there we can see that's directly on the middle. So now we can hit P and then separate it by its own selection. So it's its own object. And then we can add a mirror modifier because I love mirror modifiers, right? And we're going to mirror this. Where are we going to mirror this thing? I don't know. Let's close that out. Make sure I have the right thing selected. There we go. Control A, rotation, scale, and location. Now let's add a mirror modifier and the Y with clipping on and apply. There we go. Now I got this nice little handle. It probably took way too long, but oh well. Uh, what do you do? What are you going to do? You can't rush perfection, you know? So that looks good. I think it might be a little bit, um, a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for there? It might be a little bit uh, exaggerated in terms of the largeness of the round parts here. These probably don't need to be so exaggerated. I could hit XC, turn off my clipping, or my snapping, and bring those in just a little bit. There we go. And then those are clipping through a little bit further, but you know, that's fine. So there we go. We got this nice little handle. You can grab to pull open the mailbox. It's got its little pivoting rod there. Although it looks like there's a shading error there. So let's just zoom in. And yeah, we got a few shading errors. So let's grab this middle part. Let's go into object mode and then hit control N. Let's see if that fixed it. Yep. So we recalculated the normals, got rid of that shading error and the shading error over here. And everything's looking great. I'm going to save this real quickly. Man, that's that's a mailbox, all right. That is a mailbox indeed. So the last thing that we should probably probably do is create some rivets for this thing. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to come over to the side here. I'm going to grab this vertex right there in the middle. I'm going to say Shift S and say Cursor to Selected. And then we're going to put in a UV sphere. Let's zoom in on that sphere. And then hit F6, and let's do 10 by 10. And then we're going to rotate it on the X by 90. Let's see if that's the right way. Yep, that seems to be the right way. And now we're going to just clean this up. So XF on the back half, L, XF. And then we can grab this whole thing here. And we will do this by the 3D cursor because it's right where we need it to be. And then we're going to say SY and just kind of flatten this, this one out. And we can do it a little bit more. And then, of course, we need to scale this down. Whoa, let's not scale the whole thing down. So something like that. That's a good size rivet, I would say. And we need to smooth shade this, so WA. There we go. And let's... Hmm. Let's see, we could grab this edge loop here, or this uh, face loop of faces here, and inset them, and then bring them in just a bit like that. So it looks a little bit more like a rivet, although the center part should probably be a bit smaller. So let's undo that. Let's do this one. And then I'm going to hold shift to make sure that we're that actually I'm going to insert that and then insert once more. So something like that, just so it's smaller and a little less noticeable. G Y bring that back. There we go. That's what we want. And then of course, if we wanted to go nuts, we could just bevel, bevel some of these edges to give them a bit of softness. Let's turn that down. Same with here. Just shift R that. There we go. That's a nice looking rivet. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to take this rivet and we're just going to separate it out onto its own selection so that we have control over it. And then GZ, bring it down. I'm going to shift DZ, duplicate it up so that we have a copy of it here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this into an array modifier. So now we can see there's two. We can set this to four. And then we can change, let's, 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 
do fix count. I do fit length. No. Yeah, we'll do fix count. And then we'll do an offset of, I don't know, what, 10? That's too much. Do an offset of five. No, we want something closer. So let's try 10 for now, and then we'll hit uh, GX and bring it over. That's actually looking pretty good. Um, let me think to myself. Two, three, four. You know what? Let's do five, and then we'll bring this down to, I don't know, say 7.5 maybe. Yeah, that's looking pretty perfect. Maybe just seven. Give it, give it some space in between the edge there and this. And I know I'm eyeballing this, so let's do this and we'll apply this modifier. And then we want to bring our pivot to the center of mass. So this is shift control out C. And now you can see our pivots there. Let's turn back the control there and just say active element. And then turn on our clipping here so that we can get it directly in the center. That's looking pretty good. So now we want to apply our rotation and scale and location, and we're gonna apply another mirror modifier. So mirror this on the Y and turn on clipping. And there we go, we'll just apply that so that it's one object. So there are some nice rivets on the bottom of our mailbox. Go back over here, turn on our X-ray mode. So now we're gonna grab this one and we want to be active element and make sure that center mass and then because I'm in the side view I can actually just move this and actually what we can do is we can duplicate this yeah and uh, use use our grid coordinates here just delete that one and we can use our grid coordinates to uh, manage there we go. And then we can grab these. I'm going to create another duplicate here and just kind of leave it over there. So then we're going to grab these. Let's turn off that hand. Look, it gets in the way. And we're going to join them and then hit control A, location, scale. Let's move over here. Those are perfectly aligned, it would appear. Let's look at it from the top. Yep, that's uh, pretty perfectly aligned, I would say right on the surface great um although some of these seem to be these seem to be in a little bit more these seem to be right on the edge there so you know what because i'm picky i'm gonna align these okay uh, active element let's turn that handle back on um oh boy actually yeah so we need to do it like this let's do vertex Deselect everything, grab these. And we're gonna bring it in and align it to that edge. There's that. And we need to duplicate the other ones to the other side before we can align those. Okay, so let's grab these. And we're gonna throw them in a mirror modifier as well. So mirror, Y, clipping, apply. There we go. So now we can grab these, go into edit mode with our vertices, deselect everything, grab these and bring them to a line with the back of this. There we go. Now everything is in line on this surface here, just to make sure that everything is either through or on the surface. And it's looking pretty, pretty darn good. Those rivets in there. Nice. All right, so actually, let me undo this and see, you know what? <laughs> I wanna line them the other way. I know. I'm sorry. I'm so picky. I get it. Uh, I just, I just want to make sure it's good. That's all I want. Is that really a crime? All right. So let's make sure that we only have these selected and we're going to move these out so that they're aligned with these right here. It's not really, okay. Yeah, it is aligned right on that edge right here with this point. And we're going to do the same over here. So we're going to take these, make sure those are just deselected, grab those. And we're going to align these right 
here on this edge, and then we're gonna grab these and do the same thing. Perfect. Okay. And align them there. There we go. And now if we come over here, we can see. There we go. Our rivets are behaving the way we want. We need to move this one as well. Just to make sure. Well, actually, no, this is gonna go somewhere else. So all right, let me show you a cool trick. So let's isolate this with Shift H. We're gonna zoom right in on it and we're gonna grab this edge here, right? And then we're gonna change this to active element. So now our pivots on the back end. Uh, let's also say Shift H cursor to center. Uh, nope, that's not where I wanted it to be. Cursor to selected, there we go. So now it's at the center of everything that's selected. We can also say median now so that they're arranged. So now that we have our cursor there, let's also put our pivot there. So origin to 3D cursor. So now all of our pivots and origins and everything are right in the center of the back half of this. I can unhide everything and I can turn on snapping to face and then also this individual elements on the surface of other objects. And if I grab this and hit G, it will actually pop itself onto the surface here. And then what's cool is I can turn on this little thing here, align rotation with snapping object, and I can bring this over here, and it should have rotated itself, but it seems to not want to have done so. So we can just manually rotate it RC90, there we go. And now we got this rivet on the front of our mailbox. How cool is that? Boom, that's awesome. Let's just make sure that our rotation didn't get uh, messed up at all up here and we're good. So 90 and negative 90. Uh, let's see what happens when we turn off this. Yep, so that needs to be negative 90. Let's see what happens when we zero out the Y. Yep, that also needs to be 90. Excellent, okay, cool. So our rotations are proper and let's see. Um, let's turn this back on. Uh-oh undo that. So let's set this like this and then just put this up here. Mm. Won't let me rotate it. Well, I wanted to get these rivets in here. I guess we could put some on the front. So let's set this to 90. Oh, why are you doing that? Oh, let's turn this off. There we go. So we could put some here. So something like that. And then we could shift DZ down. And then we could shift R, shift R, shift R. And just shift R a couple more times, maybe one more time. And then just grab all of these. Let's turn off that handle. And shift them up and just over a little bit, so G, Y, just so they're about centered. There we go. So now those rivets exist in a place that makes sense. Control J, Alt A, rotation, scale, and location. Let's do a mirror modifier again. My favorite modifier, clearly. There we go. So that's good enough, I think. We've got enough rivets covering this entire mailbox. Um, we could, we could take all of these rivets here. Let's make sure I have this on. There we go. And Shift D, leave them in place. P and Z. And we could go G, Y. Oh, oh. Select the correct one, G, Y. Or just G. Do that with G. Trying to get it to stick to this surface here. All right, so let's undo that. We're gonna go R, Z, 90, negative. Or actually just center of mass there. R, Z, 90, negative. And we're gonna go G, Y. And let's go to the top. There, okay. Turn that handle back on and we'll set this to active element just to kind of force it. 
And we'll use vertex mode. And we'll snap it there and bring it across. And actually, we want to set it to, we'll hit F. All right. Turn on our snapping mode here, I think. Nope. Okay, let's see. I think it's gonna be here. So let's try it there. And move it over. Turn off snapping now. Yep. All right. And then we can move it up just a little bit. And There we go. Okay, so I know I'm going a little rivet crazy now. Let's apply our location and scale, and we're gonna throw on a modifier. Can you guess which one by now? And then we'll apply this. Then again, rotation, scale, and location, and then we're gonna throw on another modifier. Oh my gosh, it's modifier crazy. Okay, and there we go. So now we got this thing covered in rivets just the way I want it to be, and it looks exactly the way I had hoped. So we're gonna select those, we're gonna select those, and we're gonna select these. And there we go, we got all our rivets selected, Control J, and we got a whole rivet grouping. So this is looking great. It's what I want it to be. And now we can start talking about some material design. Let me just make sure that I didn't neglect anything. Yeah, this looks, this looks good. This is a nice uh, medium level quality mailbox here. It's got some decent detail. You could definitely use this for a number of things. All right, so our poly count is, well, we're at 11,000 verts. That's not terrible. It's a, it's a pretty generous uh, prop, obviously, or, or scene element, but it's not bad. We could, we could be doing much worse, and this is pretty clean topology, I would say. I mean, dang, can't argue with that. Even, even this here is not the worst. It could definitely be far worse. I mean, this density here is kind of, and of course the radial patterns make me cringe, but in all honesty, it, it could be a lot worse. Ah, we need to apply this mirror modifier here. All right. So now we can select this whole thing and well, let's not do that yet. I was going to merge the whole thing, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. All right. So now we're going to create the areas for decals on this guy here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put two little stickers on each side for the U.S. Uh, Postal Service and then a kind of a time sticker thing up top. And then I'll walk you through really quickly how to make that and kind of map, uh, map those to the surface there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a look at creating those decals now. So we want this body section here and we're going to create a vertex we're going to grab a vertex here. We're going to say cursor to selected and we're going to hop out of here. Just leave the cursor there. Shift A and create a plane. And then we need to rotate that by X 90 and just kind of scale that down a little bit. So it's about the size of that sticker on the side over here. Let's close this. And then what we need to do is shift this ever so slightly away from the surface. So something like that should be okay and then we're just going to accept the location rotation i'm going to come in here and click on this and turn on my normal displays we're going to do 0.5 on that so now i can tell that this is facing in the correct direction sometimes when you rotate planes um, they can get oriented in the wrong way this is actually good that's where i want it to be and this is about the height of where i want it to be i know this is down lower a bit more i want mine to be up a little higher so we'll do that, and then of course, nothing, actually, no, we're not gonna do a mirror modifier. I know, it breaks my heart. We're actually gonna do Shift D, right? Right click, and then we're gonna hit RZ 180. Let's see what that does. And boom, it puts it to the other side. So now we have both of these. Uh, select both, please. Deselect this, uh, where is it? Please. 
Okay, there's that one. You know what? Uh, it might be time for the outliner, actually. Actually, we'll just hide this. There, grab that and that, and we'll join those together, and then we'll unhide everything. There we go. So now we have these two, and then now we're going to add this piece here. So we're going to grab these two faces and shift S and cursor to selected. There we go. And we're actually not going to create something there. We're going to duplicate this, right click P, separate by selection, grab this. And then what we're going to do is remove this edge in the middle. We're just going to dissolve that. Let's make sure that it's facing in the right direction. So let's open up our end menu, turn this on, and it is perfect. We're going to change this to normal. And we want to grab this edge up top, and we're going to bring it down just a bit because it is a little bit smaller. This is going to come up quite a bit. And something like that is actually pretty good the way it is. So now what we need to do, whoops, let's turn that off and grab this and we need to just nudge it away from the surface. So I'm going to click this and hold shift and hopefully that should be okay. In fact, I'm going to click and hold shift. We're going to bring it back. Okay. Just so it comes out and then a little bit above just so we can see a little bit of occlusion. I can see a little bit of a shadow there and there we go. So now we can take that and this side piece here and control J. And the way that we can check this is actually with some material design. So before we get into these decals, let's start with some material design. So let's select the outer portion and the inner portion here. And, you know, what? we're going to select everything actually and deselect these side parts here. So. All right, so this, this we need the outliner for now. So let's switch from our reference to our outliner. So back to our outliner. And we're going to name this part that I have selected here, which is in scene four, not scene one. We're going to name this decals. And then the rest of this stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll leave this, we'll leave the rivets as its own thing. And then this, 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 this is our mailbox. So we're just going to join all these control J join and mailbox. There we go. Uh, mailbox zero, zero one, because I'm pretty sure I have another mailbox in the other scenes. I wish it would just, yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, save this. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select our mailbox and we're going to start with some material design. So what I need for this is I'm going to open this up and I'm going to split this in half. And the bottom half is going to be the UV image editor. We're going to switch over to that mailbox reference image and just leave that down there. And then this will become a 3D view, but we're going to use this to preview our materials. So I'm just going to shift to Z that into a rendered and then we're going to add a floor so we need a floor plane turn on our snapping whoops not proportional editing snapping to grid increment and then just scale this up to uh, we can go about there that's fine we'll call this floor and we're going to apply our rotation and scale as well as location and that's fine. We're also going to add in a lamp. So let's get a lamp, an area lamp. And actually I'm going to delete that lamp because I didn't check to make sure I was in the right render engine. So we're going to have cycles render engine and now I can add a lamp in. So that way it uses cycles nodes. If you don't change this before you add the lamp in, you're going to have to come over here and make sure you click use nodes. That's just an extra step, but I want to make sure that I'm doing this right. So if I move this light up here, I can change the size of it to five and the strength of it to 500. So now we have a good preview of this. Now, obviously having light directly on top is not the most ideal situation, but I'm going to leave it for now. We're going to go to the world settings and add a new world. And you can see now we have some medium color there. I'm actually going to pick something of a pink light, light salmon ish color. We're going to turn this up. So maybe a little more red in there, bring it closer to white. 
something like that. I know that's somewhere of a cross between a pink and a salmon, but um, that's what I want. So this is the kind of environment we have. We can try ambient inclusion. Now let's turn this down to point 0.1 maybe. I don't see the difference that makes. Yeah, we'll leave that off for now. We'll just leave the world settings the way they are. And now what we're going to do is I'll leave this light on at the top. Maybe, you know what? Maybe I'll just bring it forward a bit like this and hit RY and rotate it so it's pointing at the front of our mailbox. There we go. Now we're getting some nice nice illumination across the front of our mailbox. And this, this is starting to look pretty good. Um, let's save that one more time. Click on the mailbox, and now let's come over to the Materials tab. So scroll all the way up. And here we're going to get into some material design. I'm going to try to explain it as well as I can. Um, so just bear with me. So we're going to create a new material, and we're going to call this Mailbox. Right, and then immediately Blender will assign in Cycles Render, so this is a Cycles material, it'll assign a Diffuse BSDF. Now BSDF is a big acronym that I don't have the mental acuity to memorize. So what it actually kind of describes is, it, it describes, hmm, how can I, how can I put it? It describes the surface color of this material. So we've applied it to the mailbox. So if I change this to red, it'll change the mailbox to red. But because it's a diffuse color, what it does is it doesn't describe any other part of the surface quality. It's simply diffused. There's no shininess to it. There's nothing else. It's simply applying a color to the evenly diffused surface of the object. So this isn't completely accurate. Or, or useful to us even. The way we would wanna handle this is Blender has a different shader called the principled shader. Now what this shader does is if we kinda of tumble around the top here, we can see that now we're getting some specular reflection. If we zoom in really close, let's make sure that my render device is set to GPU. That way it'll go a little bit faster. Back into our material tab. You can see we're getting some specular reflection coming off the top of the mailbox here from our big light that's casting into the scene. And the reason why that's happening now is because we've used that principled shader or principled BSDF. And okay, so I was gonna get into what BSDF explains. Essentially, um, you know what, let me, let me just look it up. So BSDF, uh, I just wanna know what the, uh, the actual acronym stands for, okay? So what BSDF stands for is Bidirectional Scattering Distribution Function. And essentially what that means in layman's terms, I suppose, my, my simple explanation is that Blender is trying to calculate light bounces. So Cycles Renderer is a ray tracing engine. And what that means is we have a light in the scene, a couple of lights. In fact, we have an environment light, and then we also have this area light. And this area light is casting light rays and it's bouncing off the surface of this mailbox thanks to this shader. And this shader is giving, is using some algorithms to tell Blender the way that it should be interpreting the way the light bounces and comes back into our view or the camera. So that's essentially what, what uh, BSDF stands for. It's looking at bidirectional scattering distributions through a certain function. It just means it's Blender's way of calculating the way that the light should bounce and the way the computer should interpret that to render pixels on the screen. That's really all that that means. In terms of our own necessary artistic understanding, I should say. Now, of course, if you wanted to become a rendering engineer and write your own render engines and things like this, there's a whole lot of very complex math that goes into that, which I personally don't have the mind for, at least not in my current state. Maybe if I took a couple of years to study it, perhaps, but um, currently that's what's happening. So we want this principled BSDF shader and it's using multi-scatter GGX, which is another sort of um, algorithm or model. I should say it's probably a more, more accurate to say model that looks at the way light is being diffused across the surface of this object. Um, it's very particular and you can see this in other render engines. So we want the base color to be this blue. So we're just going to select this blue right here. And now you can see that our mailbox is blue, but it's super, super shiny and reflective. 
Um, we also might want to increase the brightness of this blue just a little bit, not too much. We don't want it to be overly cheery. Uh, maybe, maybe over here and then just turn this down and darken it just a bit. I want this to be a serious mailbox. Um, all right, anyhow. So I'm noticing that the sides of our mailbox are not showing the decal, and that's because they're being lost underneath here. So the way I can solve that is grabbing these two and then saying by the normal for the individual origins, we're just going to go S Y hold shift and just move them out until they appear. If, if it's letting me, I can't tell if it is. Okay. We're going to hit P and separate them into their own select that S Y. Shift, there we go. So I want I want it to just pop into existence right there. Okay. And then now we can rejoin these three. Excellent. So now if I zoomed in, oh boy, it is actually, it looks like it is actually coming off the surface just a tiny bit. So here, let's just do S Y shift. Uh, you know why? I have grid snapping on S, Y, Y, shift. There we go. Now we can get way more accurate. Boom. There we go. Now it looks like it's just sitting on the surface there, like a sticker or something. That's exactly what we want. And this one, yes, we did compress it just a tiny bit, but it'll be fine. All right. So now we can see, let's get back to our material discussion, select the mailbox. So now we can see that we are creating this kind of painted looking mailbox, but it's super, super shiny. And you can see here that some of the reflections are a bit diffuse. Well, how do we tell Blender to diffuse our specular reflections? And that's what these, these white and um, kind of brown colors are here. These are specular reflections. So let's take a look here. We do have a specular option. We can turn this all the way down and there we go. It becomes completely diffused. We might not want that. So maybe we just want, I don't know, 0.1 specular and it's, it's okay. We'll say 0.25. That's probably a little bit closer to this, maybe even 0.3 because it is, it is pretty, pretty bright and white there. And so we have another option here. We have what's called roughness. And what roughness means is you can think of it like this. Every single object, hold on a second. Every single object in the physical world has a microscopic surface quality. So for example, if you looked at the microscopic surface quality under, under a microscope, of course, of an incredibly smooth highly reflect, reflective chrome object, you would see that the surface of it is relatively smooth. There's probably a little bit of roughness in it, some variation in the, the surface quality of the, uh, of that, of that piece of chrome. But if you took a piece of sandpaper to it and then looked at that same piece of chrome underneath, if you really, really scratched up the surface, you would note that it was rough. And so that's what this roughness attribute or parameter refers to. It refers to the imaginary microscopic surface quality of that object. So if we turn this all the way up to one, this whole thing becomes completely diffused. If we say 0.5, it's going to be like plastic because it's, it's matte. So you can see here that that reflection has been almost completely roughened out to the point where light is diffusing so far that it doesn't look like metal or paint anymore. Well, Clearly this has a lower roughness, so we need to turn this down even more. So let's try 0.3, and that's getting a little bit closer. That's probably, hmm, it's, it's getting there. And then let's try 0.2. Okay, that's probably the closest we've gotten so far. Let's turn up our specular now. Let's put it back to one. And that's actually getting pretty close to, to this sort of reflection here. The other thing we could try is we could try anisotropic um, uh, reflection here and then just rotate this by say 45 degrees. So this parameter inside of Blender, I'm not too familiar with. Essentially what an anisotropic um, rotation and 
the percentage here is supposed to do is create the appearance of brushed metal. So I think it is kind of doing it a little bit. If I turn this all the way down, you can see that it's there. If I if I change this degree to well, 0.5, maybe that'll help turn this up. So I notice it's not actually a degree measurement, it's just the rotation. So there we can see it's it is actually doing something. If I turn this down, you can see that the reflection is pretty even. If I turn it all the way up, you can see it kind of angles itself. Well, let's undo that. So you can see there there's some some differentiation in the reflection there. And that adds a, a minor touch of realism to things. Now the other thing is, I do want to turn down the specular, but we'll do 0 0.5. That should be okay. Now the other thing we have here is metallic. So what this means is we're telling Blender exactly what percentage of, well, it's, it's really hard to define this because in, in reality, there are really only two types of materials. You have met metallic materials and dielectric materials. So metals and everything else. Uh, plastics, um, wool, cotton, etc. All the other surfaces that are, are not metallic. So metallic objects are obviously a metallic of one, which would represent white. And so this is an entirely metallic surface now, and then dielectric would be zero. Now you might be thinking, well, let's do it metallic. Well, why doesn't it look right? Well, the reality of the situation is that even though the mailbox itself might be made out of metal, um, it's actually painted. So paint itself, unless you get a metallic paint, is not metal. It's actually dielectric. And so we want to leave this metallic setting to zero. But if you want, you can kind of fake stuff and say 0.5. And now you've got a cross between a metal and a dielectric. Obviously, something like that doesn't exist in the real world. Um, you would you probably more likely use masks in order to tell certain parts of the object how metallic it is. And really, the only way that you would find something that's a mix between the two is if you had a layer of dust or or something over the top of another metal. Uh, but everything in the real world is either metallic or dielectric. So that's how we understand uh, metalness in terms of 3D rendering, at least in terms of physically real based render engines. Now, of course, cycles, like I said, you could do 0.5 and that's not physically real, but you could do it for artistic purposes and that's perfectly fine. Um, but for our purposes, we want to leave it. I'm um, trying to think here. Maybe we can change this color a little bit just to desaturate it. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better. Maybe bring it. Ooh, that's not a good color. Here I am being picky again. Something like that. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. Um, let's see. We might need to diffuse this just a little bit more, so maybe a roughness of three would be better. And that's starting starting to look a little bit closer. Again, we can only go so far with this. Um, some of these other options here, um, sheen, tint, clear coat, we're not gonna play with those. Those generally have to do with layering, layering forms of specular reflections. To be completely honest, uh, I would have to study up on these and read the documentation to really get use out of them. I know I've seen people use some of this stuff for things like car shaders, where you have a clear coat over the top of a semi-metallic material that's got some flaking in it to create a nice car paint shader. Uh, we're not going to be using those today. We, we have no use for them right now. I can do a tutorial on them later um, after I get a little more familiar with them. The IOR here is called the index of refraction. And every type of metal that exists out in the world has its own index of refraction. Water has its own index of refraction. Certain types of glass have their own index of refraction. This is a value you can look up. Um, we're gonna remember the default value of 1.45, but if we set this to like 1.3, it'll change things. If we set this to eight, for example, it'll change things. Um, can't really see it too well. This It'll become more prominent, I believe, if we use metallic. So let's just turn that all the way up and we can change the index of refraction. Actually, it's not really doing a whole lot here. I'm not too sure how Blender handles IOR. And we'll just leave it at the default. You know, I'll put it at 1.3. 
But essentially, um, if we had a refractive type of material, so like a specular material that you could see through, uh, like glass, something transparent, then um, the IOR would change how much light refracts through it. But the same thing occurs with different types of metals, um, how that bends and reflects light, um, at least in a physically based um, render scenario. Now, the reason why I'm not completely familiar with Blender is what I often opt to do in my own professional workflow is I use an external renderer called Octane Render, and I, um, I take assets that I create in Blender and put them into Octane and render them there because it is a physically based, unbiased render engine. However, Cycles Render is also very good, and it's completely free, not to mention I, I paid a lot of money in order to get a license for Octane. Uh, cycles is free and it is a GP renderer just like Octane that works very well. So some of these uh, settings, I'm familiar with what they stand for, but they operate just slightly differently inside of Blender. So bear with me as I kind of walk through them. Um, so IOR would be very useful if we had a transparent material and you could see how it bends and refracts light. Um, so again, that's the index of refraction. Transmission has to do with the way light travels through an object and the normals are basically a faked way of creating surface quality. Uh, so we're not actually going to be dealing with normals. Um, we could we could put a bump map on or something. One thing uh, that would help us to kind of add to the realism of this is in our roughness map, uh, a roughness channel, I should say, we could put a texture map and that could simulate the way that the mailbox has been worn over time. So you can see there's some of these paint scuffs on the front here that might be done with a roughness map, obviously also a diffuse color map because they're different in color value. And then the rust would probably be its own separate material layer and we'd use masks to hide and reveal that. Um, so that's probably how we would handle that. So now let's take a look at creating an actual metallic surface. So let's hit the plus button and create a new material. We'll call this Chrome. We'll set this to a medium gray value and change this to a principled shader. We're gonna put our metallic all the way up. We're gonna set our roughness to say 0.1, and then we're gonna select our rivets, and we're going to apply this material. So come back up here, look for that newest chrome that we just created right there. And now you can see that they are indeed reflecting the environment and doing so quite well. As a nice chrome material. Let's also come in here and apply that chrome to some of these other elements. So let's grab, I don't know, these faces here. Grab that, 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 and that. And we're just gonna go like that. And let's select also the inside portion of this. There we go. And I'm gonna hit period key, make sure that I can actually get in there and make sure that these are getting selected as well. I know we're probably never gonna see them, but it's, it's good to be precise, I guess. Let's uh, increase this in size, make sure we're getting all of it. There we go. So we got that. Let's also do this handle up here. Uh, so let's hit this and the period key. And actually, let's undo that selection and let's just grab this cross section, that cross section. Oh, I can't do that because it will increase the selection down here as well. So I'm gonna have to be very particular about how I do this. Let's do it like this, like this, and like this, and do that. There we go. And let's come over here and do the same. And there. And do I want to do this central bar? I suppose I could. Um, hmm. You know, in the interest of my sanity, I don't want to, but I'm going to. <laughs> so let's make this small. Deselect that. Do the same here. Right here. Deselect this. Grab these, deselect that, and do that, deselect. Okay. And grab these, deselect. Grab these, deselect. Grab 
those, deselect that. And come over here, select, select, deselect. Deselect, grab, grab, grab. Okay. Um, I think those are all the things that I want to make Chrome on this. So we'll just hit, uh, grab Chrome, hit aside, change this to like a medium gray. And actually make it, make it a little bit lighter. It doesn't need to be so dark. Yeah, somewhere around there is a good, that's a good Chrome. So now if we zoom out, we can see this mailbox has got a nice bunch of rivets that are reflective. They look like Chrome starting to have a little more believability to it that's actually looking pretty nice I, I i'm liking that let's change the color of it one more time uh, i know i'm being so picky i want to make it just a little bit brighter because this is some really really bright mailbox light here and let's change the area light here in the front we're going to change it to 700 uh, maybe a thousand just to get it really illuminated because there's a really bright light shining on it on the front of this one so let's do let's do 1200 there we go that's looking pretty nice that's a nice happy looking mailbox boom we're getting our mailbox on i'm liking it it's looking good okay so now what i want to do is work on these decals so the first thing i need to do is switch into face mode and select all of them and then hit u and then unwrap and essentially what this is going to do has non-uniform scale unwrap will operate on a scaled version. Okay, so we need to switch out here, control A, rotation and scale and location. Let's try that again. U unwrap. There we go. It didn't give us an error that time. And so now I need to close these windows up just a little bit to give us a little more working space. Let's do this. There we go. So we'll let that sit there just for our own reference. We'll zoom this out. And then I need to grab another window here and open up another image editor. So you can see now how I'm customizing my uh, whole UI here. But essentially what I need to do is hit this here and then switch into, there we go. And so now we have all of these flat planes that are mapped onto a 2D canvas. Let's turn on our syncing here and make sure that we're packing our UVs. So right here, control P, F6, make sure that we're not rotating it and we're gonna put a 0 0.05 radius in between all of these things. And then we're gonna grab this and we're gonna check to make sure that our vertices are aligned. So this is obviously rotated. So we need to rotate this 180 degrees. So we're gonna grab this R180. And now if I switch to this vertex, it should represent the top left one and it does. Excellent. I'm going to switch this to global because it makes me worry. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. We're going to grab this. That's aligned properly. And we're going to grab this. That is also aligned properly. Now, because I know that these decals are going to be the same on both sides, I can actually stack this UV set on top of this one to the right. I just want to turn my snapping on with the control tab, bring this over, and there we go. They're, they're stacked. So now what I can do is I can grab all the sets that are available and scale according to the 2D cursor, which is in this corner. So now I can scale this up. And I'm going to turn off my snapping and there. So now we have this completely scaled. They're uniform. And we can put an image into this area and we can create an image to do that. And then we can also get the, the decals onto our object by. So essentially what we've done is we've taken this geometry, this three dimensional geometry, and we have laid it out in two dimensions. So fortunately, because these are planes, it's very easy to do. Obviously, if we were going to do this rounded section, we would have to put in some cuts and we'd have to teach Blender how to lay this out flat as if we were unwrapping it. So that's what UV unwrapping is all about. We're taking the 30 three dimensional surface of our object and laying it flat so that we can project a texture onto the surface of it. So that's essentially what we've done here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go UV export UV layout. We're going to go onto the desktop and we're going to set out a PNG image with 1024 by 1024 size because that's the appropriate size for our scene. Obviously, if we needed more resolution, we could make it even larger. Our fill opacity at 0.25 is fine. And we're just going to call this mailbox um, D 
decal underscore UV so that we know it's the UV layout for our decals. We're going to export that. And then we're going to come over into Illustrator. And I have a previous document here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete everything here. Just delete that. And we are going to open up that image. So I'm just going to open up the Explorer on the side here. And I'm just going to go and find that UV decal PNG. Drop it in here. Find my alignment panel, which is here. Make sure we're aligning to the artboard. And we're just going to drop that there. And then I'm going to lock that layer. So now we can create a bunch of extra layers. So this one's locked here. And we can start to create our art on top of this and know exactly how we want to save this image so that we can utilize as much space as possible for our UVs. So I'm looking at a reference image over here. So I'm just going to paste it. So there's a reference image on my my other screen. I have three screens. So one of them I can use for exploring files. The other I can use for recording and um, references and all that other fun stuff. So here, here I'm looking at this. We want to create this and we also want to create this top deal here. So that's what I'm going to be looking at and referencing. Uh, it'll probably be off screen and I'll be referencing it on the side over here. But for all intents and purposes, what I'm referencing is right here. So let's start with the sticker on the side. We're going to create a rectangular pattern like this. It's kind of what we want. And again, like I, like I said, um, when you create UVs, you want to utilize as much of this canvas as possible. But you also want to utilize as much as this space as possible. Because the more you can use in here, the more information you're going to get the more detail you're going to get. So for example, if I were to make this really small in here, it would be very pixelated when we go to map it or it would just be tiny. So we don't want that. I want to, I want to capitalize on the amount of space that I have. Make sure that I'm utilizing it properly. All right. So that's pretty close to both edges. Um, but it should work. That should be fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the actual images and then we're going to create opacity maps. And I'll show you why we're going to do that. It'll make a lot of sense by the time we're done here uh, in terms of uh, Blender's material setup. And then I'm going to show you the node layout inside of Blender. So I'm going to shift this to the side because it is shifted and I'm just going to widen it a bit. Just bring it over. And then we can round these edges like that. We can bring them in. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. And let's go to our swatches. I have this blue color saved from here. I picked out my own blue. And then what I can do is I can hit control C, control F, and I can scale this in like, like so. And take these edges, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and just kind of eyeballing it, move it up and keep them in alignment with everything. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Um, let's move it over a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and let's click the middle of this and shift the whole thing up a bit and over. So now what I want to do is this, I want to leave this color, this background bit. I'm actually, actually, let's undo that. And I'm actually going to make this white. And I'm going to give it an outline so we can actually see it. There we go. So we know exactly where we're working and with what we're working. And now I'm going to lock both of these temporarily and I'm going to start to create my eagle shape. So I want this to come down like this, like that. And then I'm going to do this. So I'm actually going to bring this down because I know that I can round it. And then I'm going to do the same thing here, down. And then we'll just, I don't know, do something like this. And I'm, again, I'm making use of the space. Because later I can come back and just chop this off. So now I'm going to grab this. I'm going to round that out. I'm also going to grab this and round that out. There we go. So now we've got this kind of eagle looking shape going on. I kind of want to round stuff out just to give it a more modern look. So this here, I don't know if it'll let me. Yeah, it won't let me because I've already used this here. So I could just go object expand. And then maybe it'll let me do it. I don't know. No, it won't. 
Okay, so I can convert this point here like such. Do something like that. Could reshape this whole thing. Eh, that's fine. Whatever. I know it's sharp, but it's fine. It's fine. I can try, but yeah. All right, so that doesn't want to play nice. That's okay. It doesn't matter. We're not here to learn the intricacies of logo design. We're just going to work on getting our 3D textures proper. Will you please? No. Uh, Illustrator. I've always, I've always had conflicts with Illustrator. There we go. We can grab this one. We don't want to round that off. Might round. No, no. We could do this and we could run it this way. There we go. That's looking kind of cool. Let's bring this down. Whoops. Bring that down here. And then turn this handle like that. And bring, whoops. Let's grab both of these and bring them down. Ah, uh, no. Okay, that's looking kind of cool. It's got a nice flow to it. And now we're going to create the next bits of this right here. Close that off. Let's come back over, bring this down. Do something like this. Yeah, that works. And want that color in there and then of course I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to round it and we can bring this in a little bit further of course like that and then we're going to do another one which I think is going to go from here and going to come down like that and let's zoom out so we can actually see what we're working with bring this down here and grab this and there that's pretty cool looking. All right, there we go. So I, I understand that this looks a little extreme, but I'll show you why uh, it's not too bad. So we can select this, 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 and this, and we can use our Pathfinder to divide them. And then we'll just grab these portions and delete them along with these. There we go. And now we have our nice little eagle pattern the way we want it. So let's also get rid of this white out here. And what's also nice about having the 25% opacity overlay behind this sticker image thingamajig is we can actually see where the white border ends, which is pretty nice. So now we just need United States Postal Service. So let's do that. United States Postal service and then we're going to obviously need to make this larger so we can actually see it so 60 is fine and then we'll take this and we'll bring this up and yeah like that and we're going to set this to bold italic actually we're going to set the whole thing to bold italic there we go bring this down in fact we could probably scale this up a bit Yeah, that's fine. Changes the same color blue. Really wish I could round this off, but that's eh, whatever. And we're going to put in a red line in between the two of these. So let's make this, what, five pixels probably would work well for this. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's do this. And there we go. We got the United States Postal Service. Let's move that over just a little bit. And we'll put some rounded edges on those, on that uh, stroke there, rounded edges. I'll make it a little bit thicker just so we can see it better. There we go. United States Postal Service. Obviously, we could space this out a little bit more. There's a ton of space on the top and bottom, but that's fine. Uh, again, this isn't for logo design. This is just for 3D. Um, let's also get rid of this shape here. And then we're going to round this up top. We're going to take this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and round these shapes as well. 
and there we go. We got this nice modern looking shape there. And I don't know if it will let us, you know, let's try it. Let's, I'm going to go for the, I'm going to go for it I'm gonna try it. Let's take this, zoom in. Actually, let's lock the layer underneath. We'll select this, control J, invalid objects. Okay, so let's try object, path, average, both, control J, won't work. All right, so let's try this. Okay. So now I should be able to select this. Oh, it still won't let me. Yeah, there's still. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Ah, I gotcha. Finally. Okay. There we go. And let's try. Can we do this one? What's wrong with this now? Okay. Let's delete that. Grab this and just pull it like this and grab this and round it. And I really want to round that. Oh, that looks so much better to my eye. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know. That's a little bit much there. Just decrease that a little bit. And then maybe we can shape this down here a little bit better. Something like that works pretty well. And that actually works quite well for me. It's nice and stylized, but it's also modern. Okay, now that I'm done nitpicking that to death, <laughs> let's create this shape up here. Okay, so I'm going to just use the cursor to give me there that about there. We're going to round it, of course, because that's what we like to do. And I'm just paying attention to this thing up here. So it looks like we've got white. So this is white. White. And then CF. Control C, Control F. And we're going to set this to blue. And we want to bring these over. One, two, just one. Okay. And we'll grab this. You can see that there. So I'm trying to make this even to the edge. So, yep, that looks like it's got a nice even range around there. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So we have six um, grid sections here. So let's take a look. Let's go from here to here. And let's center this on this one. So we're going to do selection. Uh, how do I want to do this? Undo that. Yeah, there we go. So we're intersecting, intersecting. We're just going to bring the top of this down. So that we have an area for the logo at the top, the United States Postal Service. And let's switch this to white so we can actually see it. And we need to divide this into six. So I'm going to use this to place some grids or guidelines, I should say, not grids. There we go. We'll put some here and here. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to divide this value, this width value here, by six. And then, of course, we're going to round it down a bit. So let's say 195. Whoops. We're going to say um, 95. There we go. And now we can bring this all the way over. We can make a duplicate on this side. Select both. Object. Blend. Make. Object. Blend. Options. Specified steps. Previews. Six. Uh, six. Hit OK. Now, for some reason, it's not behaving the way we want it to. So let's just undo and then try it again. Object blend make object blend blend options, specified steps, preview six. Ugh, why? OK, object expand. Hit OK, deselect, oh, un, undo that, deselect this end one. Okay. 
Let's try this again. Sometimes Illustrator can be a little finicky. Object blend make. Nope. Object blend blend options. Specified steps six. Object blend make. Still not doing it. Object blend blend options. Specified steps. Uh, let's try five. Object blend make. Still not doing it. So let's undo this. Let's set it back to six really quickly. And uh, here's here's a way we can fudge it. So we're gonna do six object blend make, and then we're gonna grab this one. We're gonna grab these two points here, and we're just going to reduce it by 30 pixels in that direction and do the same up here. There. And there we go. We've got a grid one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know why it's trying to do eight when I tell it to do six. So let's go back to blend options. It's set to six. I don't know why it's trying to do eight. There we go. Okay. Oh my God. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's so annoying. So let's take this edge again, increase it by 30. There we go. And this one as well. Oh, Illustrator. My software is always fighting against me for some reason. There we go. Okay. Whew. Got it. So now we know that the second one, let's expand this, okay, and control shift G and ungroup it. And the second one we know spans two, or the first one spans two, so we can delete this. Delete, thank you. Select this and this and bring this over. And there's that. And then the third one is fine. The fourth one has a split in the middle of it. The fifth one, has some funny stuff going on. So I'm going to put another grid line over here like this. Whoops. Come on. Let's work together now. There. We're going to delete this one and we're going to bring this down and let's see. We're going to divide this from the bottom by looks like five or yeah, we're going to do five. So, well, we're going to do seven and then we're going to do five. So divide by seven and then we need to bring this over. Right. So bring this up and then select these two and we're going to do another blend. So object blend, make object blend options, specified steps, just reduce it. Something like that in between these two mm, let's do one more there we go so then we'll do object expand Hit okay control shift the g and then grab all the ones in the middle and bring them to about the halfway point a little bit yeah like that and then there's gonna be a text box here and then let's see this one is split in half so let's find that halfway point we'll draw a line there select this use our pathfinder and cut that in half. And then we're gonna just grab these points here and we're gonna nudge them that way and grab these points here and nudge them that way. And there we go, we've got more or less what this should look like. And then we also need to grab this like that and then Pathfinder slice these and grab these, click this and this. And we want to create a grid line here. And let's undo that. I grab, let's control shift G that, grab these and bring this up to here. Although we don't want to do that to this one. There we go. And grab these individually, bring this here. And there we go. That's, that's a little bit better. So now we have a grid system going. Things are lining up well. Let's kind of hide those. And we're gonna lock this background layer. We also need to lock the back white layer. I forgot about that. 
lock that. And then we're going to grab all these and we're going to do just a little bit of rounding. It's just the, just the tiniest bit of rounding. There we go. So now it's nice and soft. And then we can do the United States Postal Service. Did I spell service right? Yep. Okay. And then we're going to change this to white. And I know I could probably fudge a lot of this, but I, I want to be somewhat accurate. At least to the degree that I know what's happening inside of my design. So we can just scale this so it fits. Like that. Maybe like that. Yep. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Here. Okay. And now we can... Now we're, we're going to start to fudge some stuff. So here we can say, let's make this nine pixels, 10, we'll do 11. So we can say post and we can say date and we can say time and we can say branch number. And we're going to grab all this and make it the same color as the blue background. And then we can drop this down here. And we can just go notice. And we can bring this over and just say, wait, limit, uh, note, postmaster. Okay, let's bring this over here, and let's empty that. Let's see. Um, let's just do just, just some random stuff. Month, day. Now, obviously, this would be inscribed, and it would have you know specific text on here, and it. General, oops, general. So this would probably be inscribed in, uh, not inscribed, but etched into this metal plate that's stuck to the front, or maybe it's a sticker that's like laminated down or something. So I'm just generally kind of fudging this. We're going to set this up like this. We're going to set this to white. We're also going to change all this from bold italic to just regular. So we're going to just go regular. There we go. And this one needs to be smaller. And we're going to use some lorem ipsum. So let's do like a good eight point. And let's get some lorem ipsum. <clears throat> lorem ipsum. Do, do, do. And I'm just going to grab a paragraph. Ugh. And it'll actually be English lorem ipsum because I, I like the English translation a little bit better. It looks, it's easier on my eyes. In my opinion, it's a little easier to look at. It actually looks like something's written there meaningfully. So uh, let's just grab this. And now I'm just kind of doing some wordsmithing to get stuff to line up properly. Okay, and now we can and we can just come down to the bottom line and say. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and I'll bring it up one. All right. So pretend that that's everything that we need for this. So we're, we're not going to do any more for this. We'll just pretend that that's good. Uh, now what we can do is delete this image, um, unlock everything, delete that, and then come over here and say file, export, export as, 
PNG range one mailbox. Uh, I'm just gonna say T underscore mailbox so we know it's a texture. Decal diffuse. Save that onto my desktop. 72 pixels per inch and transparent background is great. That that works. And then what I want to do is take both of these white images here and bring them all the way to the top. So they cover over everything. And then I'm going to create a rectangle or a cube or something, a square, and just kind of cover the outside of this. Like that, and turn it black and drop it all the way to the bottom. And we're going to export this. So export as use uh, artboards. So T underscore mailbox decal underscore opacity. So let's just make sure your decal diffuse. Yep. There we go. Same settings are perfectly fine. And so now what we can do is we can go back into Blender, which is down here. And we can add a new image texture. So we'll just add. Um, actually, no, I'm going to do this in the node editor. So let's do this. We are going to grab our decal objects. We're going to add a new material and call this decals and change this to a principled shader. Now, technically, we could do this as a diffuse shader, but I want to do it as a principal shader so you get the idea that it still works in either case. And now what we're going to do is we're going to open up a node editor so we can take a look at some material functions inside of Blender. So I'm just going to split this up and say node editor. And now you can see, well, we got a node here and this is our principled shader. And this is our material output that's allowing us to see the render here. So now what we need to do is you can now see that we, we can actually create some more complicated functions within uh, Blender's material settings. So now if I come over here and hit shift a and go to the search and type in texture or actually just image image texture, we can add in this node, pipe the color information in over here, hit open and go to our desktop and look for that T mailbox diffuse. We can do that. And now we have this mailbox diffuse information, but you can see we have this black outline around the outside of that texture. And the reason for that is because even though we have transparent PNG data there, Blender doesn't know how to interpret what's supposed to be transparent and what's supposed to be opaque. So it makes everything opaque by clamping the background color of those transparent pixels to black. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of 3D render engines will actually do this. Uh, it's very common. So now we basically have to tell Blender what pixels we want to be opaque and what pixels we want to be transparent. But in order to do this, we have to do a little bit of mixing. And what I mean by this is we can create what's called a mix shader. So let's search up a mix shader and we can actually drop it right in between here. So we have this mix shader in between our principled BSDF. I'm actually going to switch this right here. So it's in the bottom one. And then we can also create what's called a transparent BSDF. All right, so if I connect these up, you can see that what happens is now this is semi-transparent. You can't really see it all that well. So if I change the factor here of our mix shader all the way down, it becomes completely transparent. It's invisible. If I turn it all the way up, it's completely opaque. If I turn it to 0.75, it's mostly opaque. If I turn it to 0.25, it's mostly transparent. By default, it's 0.5, so it's half and half. Now, this factor can also take a texture node. So if we grab this texture node and hit shift D and move it up and we can zoom out a little bit, we can move this up here and we can grab this color node or this color wire here, pipe it into the factor, change our color to non colored data. And so we can get rid of this texture, hit open and use our opacity map and watch what happens. Now blender knows what pixels want to be opaque and which ones need to be solid. And now we have our decal on our mailbox, which is awesome. Now, of course, this is still super shiny because our principled shader. So if we come over here and do something like that, we can see that it's, it's still very shiny. So let's come over to the principled shader in our node editor and turn our roughness up to like 0.3. And now we can see it's diffused out. 
and it's behaving more the way we would expect it to. And then we can come in here and we can grab this face and this face and we can scale excluding the Y and we can actually make these a little bit bigger. So that way we're using up more of our space on the side of the mailbox. Actually, I kind of want to make them smaller because it looks to be about the right size as this here. So there we go. We have the decals on our mailbox. It's looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to leave this node editor open because now I want to create a shader for the floor. And we're going to just create a procedural shader for this rather than using a texture. Um, so we used image textures to generate these decals. And now we're going to create something called a procedural shader using math. So uh, we don't actually do the math. Blender does the math. So take a deep breath. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the ground, create a new material, call this floor. And we're going to change this to a principal shader again. And then here our principal shader shows up. We're going to scroll down to base color. I'm going to click on this dropout and we can find a brick texture and we'll see that this creates a texture here. Um, I actually want to take this texture and duplicate it and have a version of it off to the side. I don't like the direction that these bricks are going in. So I'm just going to say RZ90 and now they're rotated. So now I can take this first color and make it like a, a red, maybe like a dark red maybe a little bit closer something like that. So it looks like actual brick and maybe like a dark orange or a light, light ish red pink color here. There we go. That's starting to look a little bit better, but you'll notice that we still have this really crazy intense reflection on the floor. I actually want to desaturate this red. It's kind of bugging me a little bit. So something like that's not too bad. Maybe even here, something like that. that. That's working out better. So now, of course, we need to roughen this up. So let's find our roughness value here. And let's say we'll do 0.5, really get that roughness value. And then this mortar color is a little too dark. We never really want to use complete black and white like that. So let's find a nice value in here. Something like that looks okay. That's starting to look pretty good. We could have, of course, always changed this, make it, maybe make it a little whiter as if there's some sort of cement in between. So that's looking okay to me. Um, let's see. We can also change the row height as well as different biases. So we can kind of change how much of that color comes through on either end. So let's leave this at zero so it's even. And then we can also change the scale if we want more. I kind of want to make the scale a little bit bigger. I kind of like those smaller tiles there and we can change the frequency to see if we change it to one or two i kind of like one that looks good i like that um so that's that's looking a little bit better and a little bit more believable so now what we need to do is actually <laughs> delete this other one and duplicate this one and we're going to change this color to a uh, bright ish white so let's set this to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. We're going to grab this color here. Oops. Grab this color here and grab this color here just so that it's something darker. And then now what we can do is we can use the roughness, or actually, what we're going to do is we're going to use our normal value. And instead of using a normal map, we're going to change this to a bump map. So let's go up here, bump mapping. And then what we can do is this spawns it all the way down here for some reason. I have no idea why it does that. So let's just move this up. Let's grab this. Let's deselect everything. Grab this. Move this over here. There we go. That's better. So now we can grab the factor value of this, plug it into here and here, and see exactly what's happening with our map. So let's see. It's not really doing what I expected to. Let's try the height. There we go. So now we've created some artificial height on our bricks simply by piping this into and in the, there. We can change the strength to something like 10 and it's looking like there's really some artificial height. Maybe that's a bit too much. Maybe we should leave this at one or maybe even 0.5. 
Uh, let's see what happens when we change the distance. Soften that just a little bit. All right, so we'll leave this at 0.5. We could also invert it so that it goes the other way around, but see this strength 0.5. And so now there's some artificial heightened value there. We can change this up just a little bit more. And that's essentially what, what it does is it uses the black and white value to create the illusion of depth. And so that that's working pretty well for us. I think we're going to stop there in terms of material design because I don't want to, I don't want to go nuts with this. We're going to save this. And now let's take a look at setting up our render. So let's create a camera. And we're going to say control shift zero on the numpad. I don't think that worked. Okay. So let's do it this way. View, align view, and control alt zero on the numpad. That's what we wanted to do. Come over here to the render settings. Make sure we're HDTV 1080p at 100%. Change this to 1080 so it's square, so everything fits. And then we're going to kind of center our mailbox here. We're going to go to the camera settings and change our focal length to 50 because that more closely um, resembles what the human eye sees. So we're going to hit zero here. And we're just going to kind of move this so our mailbox is in view. We'll come over here inside of our render view. And there we go. We've got our mailbox on top of a nice brick pattern floor and a decent salmon background color. So it's not completely like our reference image here, but it's looking pretty good. So let's, I don't know. Let's kind of move our camera view here. Let's hit G that I kind of want to bring it back a little bit so we can get a bit of a three-quarter view maybe bring it up and then rotate it down to look down at this thing and bring it up like this oh there we go that's that's a pretty good look at our mailbox uh, the last things that I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the sampling setting okay this is set to final here that's good um, performance that's fine the way it's set i'm going to come over to our render passes and turn on denoising and then under color management i'm going to switch view to filmic now i think this comes standard with blender now but if it doesn't just google filmic blender and download the plugin for that and install it and then change this look to medium high contrast and that's more or less everything we need to do we just need to hit the render button now render and let Blender render out our scene. And there we go. We've created a medium detail level mailbox. It's still looking a little bit matte. So maybe I would go back into the material settings and lower the roughness so I can queue up another render for that. But for the most part, I've showed you how to model all of this, go through the process of creating all the different surfaces and decals and Honestly, I think it's looking pretty good. We could definitely take it a bit further by doing some more uh, complex material setups and perhaps optimizing our geometry a little bit better. You can see the anisotropic effect here where we're getting this point at the top and we're getting some rounding here. So maybe I'll turn that down a bit and maybe it's a little intense. So let's just select the mailbox in here, go into our materials, scroll up, turn down the anisotropic effect to like 0.1. That'll probably help. Yeah, you can see it's definitely already helping there. And um, I don't know, maybe at this point, I don't even need to change the specular reflection. So um, our specular is set to 0.5. Let's do 0.75 just to let it kind of peek through a little bit more. And the roughness is already set to 0.3, so that should be good. So then let's, let's hit up another render really quickly just to dial settings in. Fortunately, I have a GPU machine, so it renders pretty quickly. And that is looking a lot better. We might be able to deepen that blue a little bit more to make it a bit more saturated and a bit darker. But honestly, all things considered, I think this came out pretty great. Um, I had a fun time modeling this and kind of talking my way through this. Um, it's a bit of a lengthy tutorial. We're looking at two hours and 40 minutes, but that's in its entirety. Um, you could definitely take this further and, and go farther with this 
without a doubt in my mind. But, you know, I hope you learned something great. If you've got any questions uh, about this whole process, feel free to ask me. Um, I will definitely be posting these files along with the texture uh, files that we created. I, I won't post the Illustrator files. I mean, you don't need those, but you, you can take the texture files and use them. Uh, obviously, United States Postal Service is probably trademarked and everything, so probably don't don't use that in a professional capacity. But the rest of it, I don't really care about. Um, you know, take the layouts and modify them. Try to put some different textures in on your mailbox. Maybe try to layer some mailbox stuff like... Um, you can see that the way I taught you how to do transparency and a mix shader, you could probably use a mask to create, you know, using a UV layout. If you're a little bit clever, you could probably use some masks in order to layer the rust on top of the mailbox or perhaps uh, reveal it underneath a layer of paint or something like that. But all things considered, I'm pretty happy with the way that this mailbox came out. We could definitely use this for a number of purposes. Um, I had a lot of fun going through the process and I, I hope you learned something and I hope you had fun too. And I just want to say thanks for watching and hopefully I'll be able to get some more tutorials up in the future. Take care.